Hi, my name is John, and this is my contribution to Flat Earth. Um, hopefully it'll be viewed as a contribution and not detraction or uh, something negative. Um, I'm 51 years old. I work in a factory in the Midwest, um, Kansas City, Missouri be more specific um, average guy you know average life um, got married had kids um, they're grown up now um, living the living <laughs> living the American dream right um, being a good consumer I was uh, sitting in my sitting in my recliner in front of my 55 inch 4k ultra HD TV you know watching the programming um, and my, my wife turned to me and and she said um, she, she she likes to do a lot of research like like nobody I've ever seen but she, she was researching something and it was it was completely unrelated to flat earth and um, uh, she said uh, I went to watch a, a video. Um, this guy named Rob Skiba, you know, has has got some videos that I wanted to watch. But I went to his YouTube channel, and he's got videos on flat Earth. And she said, "I, I really don't want to watch any of his videos <laughs> if he's a nut job, you know, is if he's crazy." She she said, "Have you heard anything about?" you know flat earth I'm like what is it yeah have you heard anything is there is there some kind of something going on about the earth being flat and I'm like not that I know of I'm like no she's <laughs> she's like well you're you're not doing anything well, would you go you know check it out you know I, I don't want to waste my time <laughs> watching this guy's videos if he's a loon you know so you're not doing anything go you go waste your time you know check out this flat earth thing I'm like alright I will I so I, I got out my computer and and went to YouTube I didn't I didn't look up Rob Ski but I just I just went to YouTube and um, typed in flat earth just to see if there was any videos on flat earth and and I was like no, like, yeah, there's, there's a lot of videos on flat earth. And so I told my, I said, Hey, there, you know, there's a lot of videos on here about flat earth, you know? So I, I scrolled through some of them and, uh, like, there's no way I can watch them all, you know? So I'm, I'm looking for something, just the titles, something, you know, to get the most bang for my buck. So I don't have to waste a lot of time, you know, with this nonsense. Um, so I, I see a video, uh, 200 proofs that the earth is not a spinning ball by Eric Dubay. Um, my, that sounds like a good one. You know, if this guy's got 200 proofs, you know, one stop shopping, I get all my proofs in one thing. We'll just, we'll just see what it's about. So I told her about this video and she said, well, why don't you put it, you know, put it on the TV. We'll, we'll watch it on on TV together. So I'm like, okay. So I put it up, you know, I started watching and he, he moves through them pretty fast. So, so I hit pause and I'm like thinking, you know, I'm listening, you know, to what's being presented. You know, he does a good job with the narration and, and there, it was easy to watch, you know, but I'm, I stop it every now and then I'm like thinking about it and like, wow, oh, that makes sense. You know, so, so I watched some more, Pause it. I'm like, huh. All right. Watch some more. You know, I'm not. I'm not real good at math. Um, it wasn't one of my favorite subjects in school. Um, but I did. I did look up the math about you know calculating the curvature of a sphere with a twenty-five thousand mile circumference, and. The numbers that they use are, you know, according to science, 
it is eight inches times the square of the miles. And that's a lot of that's a lot of curvature, really. You know, this the planet Earth planet that we live on isn't that big, really, twenty five thousand miles. I mean if I can get in my car in New York and drive to Los Angeles it's like 2,900 miles, 3,000 miles, rounding up. That's like an eighth of the circumference. If I can drive that in my car, <laughs> the Earth isn't that big. So you should see curvature. You should be able to see that amount at eight inches times the square of the miles. That's That should be visible. But... I don't see it. You know, I went went through the whole video, stopped, stopped it here and there. I don't know how long it took to watch. It was a pretty long video to start with, but I stopped and I'm, I'm thinking. Like, and the video, the video ended, and she's like, "So what do you think?" And I'm like, "I think the Earth is flat." She's like, "Just like that, like." Yeah, that she's she's like, but that doesn't blow your mind, you know. The is it even possible, you know? And I was like, I watched the video. I I listened to the to the the arguments presented. They seem very logical, very easy to prove. I yeah. As far as I'm concerned, the Earth is flat. So, like, well, she, and then she's like, well, what about, what about this, uh, Rob Skiba? I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'll go look at his, you know, testingtheglobe.com is a, is, he has a website, um, where he, when he first started looking into Flat Earth, it was just a blog and he got so much information that eventually put it into a, a website and, uh, so I, I I read some of his little introduction and clicked on that first video, and uh, it said, uh, "If you haven't watched Flat Earth Clues by Mark Sargent yet, stop this video and go watch the Flat Earth Clues by Mark Sargent." So I did that. I stopped the video, uh, went back to YouTube, found the the Flat Earth Clues. Um, Mark Sargent does a really good job with his videos. He's a really good narrator. Those are uh, really easy to watch. Um, watched all 12 of those. Like, yeah, the earth is flat. Okay. I, w I went back to Rob Skiba. Um, his videos are from the Christian perspective. Um, I'm a Christian. I believe in God. I believe God made the globe, you know, that was, that was part of it, I mean, if you can, if you can make all of this, this earth that we live on, this flat plane that we live on, you can make anything, and the earth could be any shape, or God, you know, God wants it to be a cube, it's a cube, but, um, from Rob, Rob Skiba, um, looking at the Bible, you believe, I believe in it. I believe it is literal. What it says, you know. And when you look at it that way, like Rob said, from Genesis to Revelation, it's a flat earth book. You know. The circle of the earth, they knew the difference. The Hebrew word, there's a different word for circle and a different word for ball, you know. And they, they used, in Isaiah, he uses both, ball and circle. They, the earth is a circle. God inscribed a circle, a circle on the waters, you know. It's flat. Stretched out the heavens over the earth, not around the ball. Stretched out the heavens over the earth like a tent 
the firmament is flat. You know, going back to the to the proof, water follows the path of least resistance until something stops it, and then it finds and maintains its own level. You can't curve water, bend it around a spinning ball. You just can't. Um, the horizon is a good proof. It's always at high level. Whether you're at sea level, on top of a mountain, it's at high level. You go up in an airplane, it's at high level. Uh, I've seen footage of weather balloons at 22 miles up, 120,000 feet. Right? It's flat. Going back to the curvature, the measurable curvature, if you go 22 miles up, straight up, and the horizon is at eye level, that only happens on an extended flat plane. If the earth is a ball, then you have to account for curvature. As you go up, the horizon is going to be down. You're going to have to start looking down to see the horizon. If the earth is a ball. It's not a ball. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, the. Uh, you know, NASA, what are they doing with all that money? There is no space. I wanted I wanted the moon landings to be real. My last name is Armstrong. You know, I was I turned 5 in 1969. I watched the moon landings on TV. The little guys bouncing around, you know, on the moon. I wanted to be an astronaut too, just like Neil Armstrong. It it never happened. And what they're doing with that money, what I don't know. I don't know why why would they lie about it? I think basically if you you've heard of Occam's razor, right? Um the simplest explanation is usually the correct one. I think basically the whole thing boils down to good versus evil. God created the earth the flat earth covered it in the firmament there is a heaven there is uh satan lucifer is a is real a fallen angel who lives here on earth doing everything in his power to divert your attention away from the truth but yeah that's that's where I'm at. Um, this flat earth thing really strengthened my faith in God. You know, that's, that's where I am and how I got here. And what you do with that information is up to you. Okay, but look at it. Once you believe it's flat... And there's 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 a dome. You have you have to face you know. You have to realize that there's a creator. Okay. And you've got some thinking to do. So my name's Andy. I've believed in flat Earth that the Earth is flat for probably about seven months now. I first heard about it after I got into conspiracies and uh, I gotta tell you, my immediate thought was that it was so dumb that, <laughs> I mean, you had to be crazy to say the earth is flat. It was just so stupid when I first heard about it. I literally didn't know how to feel and so I, 
I just kept listening to what they were saying, though, and eventually it just kind of snapped. It was like, okay, yeah, it, it makes sense. The globe doesn't add up. The Earth is, is definitely flat. It's, it's stationary. It doesn't move. And, I mean, we're so indoctrinated since birth that it was so hard to overcome. I mean, I would wake up at night and just be grinding my teeth, just kind of saying over in my head, the Earth is flat, the Earth is flat, the Earth is flat kind of like just reprogramming my mind and it was it was hard for a while you know you have for 29 years I seriously believed the earth was a ball spinning and floating through space but after I looked at the evidence and I really looked and I really tried to find some hard factual proof that the earth is a ball I found not a single one there's not a single proof that the earth is a ball it's so unreal when you actually look at it uh, how all the pictures from NASA and the pictures of Earth from space, are they're fake. And the crazy thing is NASA doesn't even deny this. They don't even deny it. They admittedly put it on their website that they're all composite images. So it's it's a trip. <laughs> it's it's a trip. But it for sure is flat. And it just, it takes time to, to really, you got to want to know. You got to want to know the truth and be unbiased about it. And eventually you'll come to find that it's flat. Hello, fellow Globe Rebels. JL Forbes here with a message for you. And for those of you who like to troll our videos, I have a lot of people who are annoyed with me for posting flat earth things on Facebook because they feel like flat earth is irrelevant in the grand scheme of the corruption of the world. They cannot comprehend a flat earth, let alone why the shape of our world even matters. I've explained it to them over and over that not only is flat earth the establishment kill shot because it brings their entire house of cards tumbling down, but it is also the umbrella which covers all po political corruption. If you leave, live your life inside of an illusion while your reality is skewed, how can you possibly have a grasp on what's truly important? You're only capable of focusing on a fraction of the whole. When you wake up to the reality of flat earth, the veil of a illusion is completely removed and you see clearly how everything is intricately connected. There is no separation between world hunger, chemtrails, frivolous wars, and political corruption. It is all one organism creating disharmony and confusion in a world where nature always finds its balance. Humans are so far removed from our nature that we cannot reach a balance, not in this state. We've been deliberately stripped from our nature and it's only getting worse as time goes on unless we wake up. You see the sleeping masses are educated instead of alive with wisdom and knowledge, while we the people are focused on, focusing on one problem at a time instead of seeing the entire picture. We cannot correct a broken world by giving our attention to the parasites that infect our world without even knowing what our world is. Flat Earth is the greatest lie ever told because it keeps people trapped inside of their minds and focused on fractions instead of the whole. Flat Earth, flat Earth is a born-again experience, which is why those of us who have awoken to it won't shut up about it. We want other people to have this experience too. It's like waking up from a fog into the brightest sunshine you've ever experienced. Through Flat Earth Awakening, the connection you feel to the world and to the people in it is beyond anything you would ever imagine or expect. You understand your role as a human being is significant instead of insignificant, which has been shoved down your throat all of your life. You aren't simply a piece of dust spinning around on a larger piece of dust derived from a random big bang. You're of divine nature, perfectly and deliberately created, standing in the center of the universe, delivered here with a purpose. The first question you ask yourself once you are completely free from the globe is, what am I doing while I'm here? Why have I been wasting my life away with nonsense? How much of my time has been wasted out in outer space instead of focused right here, right now? Who am I and how can I be of service to this world I live in and to the people in it? Well, number one, you now understand is that you have to assist your fellow men and women to free their minds as well. That's the ultimate problem, as you see. Our minds are completely trapped inside of a lie. 
You cannot free the world without freeing the greater mind of humanity. This is why flat earth is so imperative. It is not a distraction. On the contrary, it is the greatest truth we have ever woken up to as a human whole. And the truth will set you free. Once you are free, you understand your purpose for being here. And nothing else matters. You want nothing more in life but to set your brothers and sisters free too. So you speak out about the flat earth just to be ridiculed and humiliated. Yet you are no longer concerned about what other people think of you because you have risen from the dead. You feel so alive that the zombies who are throwing apples at you do not shake you or move you off course. You see the zombies and the well-orchestrated conditioning of the sleeping masses. You're so awake to it that it doesn't matter how they perceive you. If you can reach even one of them out there, it is well worth the ridicule. You know how important it is that the zombies wake up and return to their true na nature. So you place yourself way out on a limb on Facebook and in group settings just to be laughed at and trolled. And while your peers think you're hanging yourself, you're actually becoming who you truly are, which is setting yourself free even more from worldly labels, from institutionalized thinking, and from in ins insignificance. Your life becomes courageous and purposeful. You begin living from your heart with passion and love instead of being confined in the labyrinth of your conditioned mind, which is consumed with fear. You are shedding faulty layers of yourself which no longer serve you or humanity. You become vulnerable, humble, and an example of what it truly means to be free. You actually give a shit, yet you don't give a shit about what people think of you anymore because you are free. And it is obvious that they are still trapped. You see it clearly while they still walk around in a fog. If you haven't had this experience and you're ridiculing the people who are screaming from the rooftops about flat earth, then consider yourself a zombie. If you are like me and don't give a shit, welcome to reality and to the true meaning of the word freedom. Let freedom reign, baby. Namaste, Globe Rebels. Keep fighting the good fight.